Hello, I'm um, Claire Lewis and I'm Director of Programmes for BA Graphic Design and um, Illustration at Middlesex. Um, welcome to this talk, which is um, a portfolio talk with a number of the visual arts and film courses. Um, hopefully you'll find this useful and I'm just going to start by introducing um, who you've got today. So with us on screen, they'll be in different orders to what I've got, but um, you've got Aidan Delaney, who is Director of Programmes for Moving Image. We've got um, Georgia Clemson, who is GAA for Fine Art. We've got Grace Baker, who is an SLA for Animation. And the box, which looks like a, um, some shelves at the moment, I promise will be Matt Ingram, and he is um, GAA for BA Illustration. And hopefully shortly, we'll have Alison Tanner, who will be joining us for BA Photography. So we've got quite a mix of programs for you, and hopefully, um, by the end of this session, you'll be really clear about what is needed in a portfolio. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do that thing where I attempt to share screen and hope that everything works perfectly. So just bear with me while I do that, and then we'll get started with the talk. Um, what I should have said, sorry, as well, is at the end, um, we will leave time to um, answer some of your questions. Um, so please do feel free to write some questions into the text box and I will get to those at the end and direct them to the people that are appropriate um, for you. Okay, so your microphone will be muted. And uh, like I was saying, you can ask Q&A questions. Um, there's a little button that you'll find that you can ask them and then we will come to those. And please also note that this session will be recorded. Okay, so this is our portfolio workshop. It's for art, design and for film, like I've already said. Um, and the aim is basically just to help give you sort of advice on what to put into a portfolio. So we'll all tell you a little bit about the courses um, and you'll hopefully find it useful. So what we'll cover. Um, we're going to have a look at what each of the courses require at uh, Middlesex. So just to sort of say, each course will be different. So um, please do sort of kind of take note for the course that you're most interested in, because you will notice that there will be differences. You'll also find that there will be overlaps as well. I'm going to talk about the format of the portfolio, the content of the portfolio, and we're just going to give you some little presentation tips for the portfolio. Um, and, and maybe a little bit at the end of each of the courses, just on um, our graduate final work. So hopefully you'll find this informative. So the courses um, at Middlesex that require a portfolio are listed on screen here. I won't sort of go through them all, but hopefully it gives you a good idea um, of which they are. And then I'm just going to very quickly go through the process. So again, just to be clear, um, this process does sort of speak for most of the courses, but you will find that some of them differ ever so slightly and um, each course will tell you about that as it comes to it. Okay, so all students or the majority of students will be asked to upload a digital portfolio. So that's an online portfolio rather than a physical one. Um, and we also recommend that you upload your portfolio as a single PDF. Um, alternatively, you can submit a Microsoft Word document with a URL on it. So if you've got a little link to a website, then just pop that on to a Microsoft Word document and send that over to us. Um, equally, you could use other platforms such as Instagram, Behance or your own website. So um, basically, there's sort of a variety of options there for you. But the one that we tend to recommend the most is a single PDF, just because that tends to be the easiest for you. OK. So as part of the um, portfolio process, we also recognise that when, once you've uploaded a portfolio, um, you might actually want to see us, you might want to meet us and sort of see what we're about, because deciding to which university to go to is a big step. It's a big decision. It's the next sort of three years of your life and you want to make sure that you're making the right choice. So what we do is we invite you to meet us um, and to sort of see what we're about and to ask the questions that you might want to ask. Um, and you can ask what you need to ask. It's important that you find out about the course. It's important that you find out that the course you're looking at is the right one for you. So you come and you can meet us, you can ask us the questions you want to um, ask. You can come and have a look at our facilities and the campus. Um, and you'll just be able to find out a little bit more about how we teach and um, the sort of things that we can offer students. So hopefully we'll be able to put your mind at rest um, if there are any sort of worries or concerns about studying at a university. Okay, so moving on to the content and format of your portfolio. So here's some little tips for you, okay? And again, each course is going to go through and show you some visuals just to back this up so that you understand. It's a little bit easier to sort of see the, the visual representation of these bullet points. 
Okay, so the first thing, it sounds a little bit um, obvious, but present your work neatly and ideally against a white background. It doesn't always have to be a white background, but quite often will help. <laughs> so just be a little bit ordered and, you know, and present it neatly. Try to avoid overcrowded pages just to give your work plenty of space. So I quite often say to people, think of your work as a hero. That's the thing that you want to stand out on the page. So don't put too much on to one page. Try and make sure that each image that you have um, is, is allowed space to work. Include your sketchbook work. That's really important. Um, and because it's a digital one, you just need to scan or take some photos of your sketchbook and pop those into your PDF. Right, avoid including too much text. So small captions and project titles are absolutely fine. There's no need to write lots of text on there. You don't need to write a little essay about which what each piece is. Um, so a little caption and a title is just enough um, for us because um, what we're looking for is the, the visuals that work. Like I say, make the most of the, the actual visuals. So if you, any of you have got 3D artwork, you um, can obviously just photo photograph that. But think about how you're photographing it. Think about what it's against. So maybe you might want to set yourself up a nice little neutral backdrop that you can then photograph your 3D artwork against. And so it stands out a little bit better. Um, any large or physical work can also be photographed or scanned and popped into your digital portfolio. So moving on to the next slide, your portfolio should represent you. This is really important. OK, so this is your portfolio and the key there is your portfolio. So it should represent you. It should represent who you are and what you're interested in and how you like to work and what your ambitions are. It shouldn't represent your tutor or your friend. It should absolutely about, be about you. And the reason for that is to make sure that you end up at the right university on the right course. So your portfolio can cover a range of subjects. So um, there is no one specific thing that needs to go into a portfolio because all of you will be from different backgrounds. You'll have all done different courses and studied different things and you'll all have different ways of working. So we can't say to you, you must put this into your portfolio. So you'll have a nice range of things such as typography or layout. You might have a bit of photography or some life drawings. You might have animations. You might have some illustrations and printmaking. So everyone will have a different portfolio and that's great. So always include at least one piece of work that shows a skill in the course that you have applied for. So what I mean by that is if you are applying for illustration, then try to make sure that you have at least one piece of illustration work in that portfolio. But Matt will talk to you more about what to put into an illustration portfolio shortly. Um, not everything needs to be finished. So again, this is really key. I think a lot of people worry that they have to have all finished work in their portfolio, and that's not the case. The unfinished stuff is lovely to see as well. We like to see the development. We like to see the process that you've taken and how you've got there. We like to see the mistakes that you make and because those are equally important because they're part of your journey and how you get to the final solution. So the development and all your tests are the things we also like to see. So show your ideas, your thought process and your visual research. So that relates to the um, point I've just sort of mentioned about just showing us how you work. And then we can sort of advise you on um, other things. So include work that shows that you can respond to a brief. Now, this applies to most of you, probably. So most of you are probably at college now and you'll have been given a brief by a tutor and you'll have responded to that. So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for your response to a brief. How have you reacted to um, a brief? What have you done? How have, you know, how have you put your own personal stamp on it? So hopefully those tips for portfolios are helpful. And we'll go into a little bit more detail for each course on those now. So we're going to do graphic design first. Now I'm program leader for BA graphic design. So I'm gonna talk you through some of our um, work. And what I'm gonna do is actually show you an example of a student portfolio. OK. Um, OK, so before I do that, I'm just going to sort of very briefly outline what graphics do. So it's very similar to what I've just said then. So via graphics, we will review all applicant portfolios online. So we look at every single portfolio that um, gets sent to us. And I think that's really important. Um, so we also offer to meet the tutor. So like I was saying to you earlier, you'll get an opportunity to sort of come and meet us. Um, we offer some on campus ones and we'll also offer some online um, meet the tutors as well they're just an opportunity for you to get to meet us and it's an opportunity for you to speak to some current students to find out what it's like to be a student on the course and just to see what we're about and if you come on campus we can show you around the facilities but equally if you're online we can also show you um, some images of studios and talk you through what facilities we have 
as well. But mainly it's about answering the questions that you might have and we're always sort of willing to um, help you. So please do come along to Meet the Tutor because I think you'll find them quite useful, hopefully. So on the screen as well, I've popped our little website. So if you are interested in seeing any more um, graphics work, then please do pop along to MDX Graphics and have a look or our equally our Instagram account, MDX Graphics. So moving on to a portfolio. This is an example of a student who did, was an online portfolio again. So she has a sketchbook here and all she did was scan it in. Um, this student has a real nice mix of things. So again, there's no particular number to put into a portfolio. Um, we're not looking for a particular type of work. We're just looking to see what this student about is, is about and if they're appropriate for a graphic design course. So here she's just been playing around with some drawings and play, just playing around with different media, so monoprinting and stenciling. Um, she's also started to play with a bit of collage. Um, this sort of page, for example, um, you might say, well, that doesn't look like BA graphic design. But to me, I see that and I look and think, well, this is a student that's got a good eye for layout. Um, starting to make some really interesting image making. She's um, starting to really consider sort of the um, the story behind it. So to me, that does feel like a quite a graphic design based piece. Um, so then moving on again, just some pages from a sketchbook, which is really nice because it's like I was saying to you earlier about talking about the development of work and the process that a student goes through and how they got to their final idea is really interesting. So it's great to see pieces like this. And it's great again to see how she handles images um, and just playing with different materials as well. And so starting to, you know, have a little bit of digital work on here. There is no expectation with graphic design that you would have computer work. Um, but if you have it, then fine, pop it in. But there is no need for you to have it. It can all be hands on at this stage if that's what you have. So again, just some nice little sketches of ideas for a project that she's been working on. She's been working on a little corporate identity here. So she's sketching out some logo ideas. Nothing's not finished there, but it's just nice to see um, the process and here's where she starts to you know finalize it a little bit more and um, start to develop it into a final piece so a real nice mix of things from the handmade to the digital she's showing you how to um, the apps and then again back again to the more sort of mood board kind of thing so again back to this sort of sketchbook sketchbook idea um, and so that's it for graphics in terms of student portfolio. Hopefully that was helpful. I'm just ending on the page here just to show you of some work of um, our current students, just to give you a little bit of an idea. But equally, like I say, we have um, more work on mdxgraphics.com. So what I'm going to do now is um, pass you over to my colleague, Matt, who will talk to you about illustration. Hey, guys. Hey guys. Um, oh, getting a bit of feedback here. Hey, how's it going? Um, so yes, uh, let's just talk a little bit about uh, the BA illustration. So um, I'm a GAA uh, for BA illustration. So that means that I assist the tutors with kind of like the day-to-day -day running of the course. And I also um, studied uh, on the course. I was in the, of the graduation year of 2016. Um, and I am a working illustrator and I also teach here at the university and assist with uh, the BA illustration, as I've already said. <laughs> um, so just to go through this first slide, so BA illustration will review all applicant portfolios online. So that means we'll look at every, as um, Claire mentioned, we look at all uh, portfolios that get sent to us. Um, we will also be offering an opportunity to meet the illustrator, uh, to meet the illustration tutors either online or on campus. And this is an opportunity for you to come in and actually meet us um, to have a chat about your work and we can answer any questions that you have. Um, at these on the campus uh, meet the tutor sessions, uh, you will visit the illustration studios, um, which is kind of uh, the studios that all the, all the students, all three years uh, kind of have a, a space in this studio. Um, and you'll have an opportunity to meet the students there, see the facilities we have on offer. Um, it's a tour that um, either myself or Elise, my, uh, the person I job share with, will uh, take you on. Um, and it usually takes around 25 minutes. Um, so it's a good opportunity for you to ask lots of questions to both uh, Elise or, or, or myself. 
Um, so if you choose to attend an online Meet the Tutor session, we will chat about the course, show work and answer any questions that you may have. And alongside this, there will be a, an opportunity to chat one to one with the tutor from the course from the course for approximately yeah, 15, 20 minutes or so. Um, so, yeah, if we could just move on to the slides of the work. Yeah. So the th thing about illustration is that um, we like to see lots of drawing basically in your uh, portfolios. Um, here we have some of the outcomes of the work that uh, is produced. Um, so those are photographs that would have been kind of like sent to us uh, as part of the as part of the portfolio. Um, next on the next slide, we have, um, as you can tell, like this is this is kind of what we what we really like to see, um, kind of like lots of drawing, lots of ideation, lots of exploration. Um, you know, this is kind of like what we would consider a really, a really successful uh, portfolio page annotation as well. You know, it's useful to see kind of like your thought process um, as you are kind of coming up with your ideas. Um, if we can move on to the next one, please. Thank you. Yeah, again, same sort of thing. You know, this is a kind of like a, a more evolved um, sort of, you know, can, like a bit when the when the ideas moved on a bit further, but still lots of uh, kind of annotation, lots of sort of like, um, you know, still further exploration as well. Um, so this is all very, very useful. This is kind of like sketchbook page work. Um, so, you know, we really love, we, we love to see sort of like what you've been doing in your sketchbooks. Um, this is uh, life drawing. Um, this is, you know, invaluable to us. Um, we actually um, offer life drawing here on uh, the BA illustration course, which is something kind of, that you know, fairly exclusive to us. Not a lot of um, illustration courses uh, other universities offer um, uh, life drawing as part of the curriculum. So, you know, if life drawing is your jam, then this is a pretty good place to, to come to. Um, so, yeah, if we can just move on to the next slide. Thank you, Claire. Yeah, so like observational drawing we have on these next slides here. Um, so we have a bit of reportage there, the buildings, um, and obviously, uh, you know, th this kind of Observational drawing is extremely important um, for sort of what we do on the course. Being able to see that you you are able to work um, from life is uh, something that we absolutely want to see kind of evidence of um, in the in the portfolios. Again, more kind of reportage work here, um, and also you know showing a kind of demonstration of, of decision making as well um the student you know has obviously sort of made choices for how best to present the work using the white space effectively that stuff that um claire was going on about earlier so um yeah take this into consideration when you're kind of sending your portfolios over to us you know how do you present the work um and this is a that is a very nice example of it similarly here more kind of like observational drawing but perhaps like now taking it more into kind of like your own personal character um so we that's something we like to see as well it's kind of like your own sort of um how you you know evidence of, of you as a as a as a kind of person and what your interests are um we also like to see obviously you know um interest in the subject itself so you know, referencing kind of like your favorite illustrators, um, perhaps a knowledge of the history of illustration as well. All of that's very useful and, and, and something that we really like to see um, within the portfolios. Um, so, yeah, anything else? Yeah, basically, we just like to see, you know, that you're that you've got a passion for illustration, basically, um, and that you are also a passionate individual yourself. And, you know, will bring your your own personal uniqueness to the course. Um, and here's just an example of some of the uh, graduation work. Um, we like to also we do, you know, we do uh, encourage animation um, within our illustrative work. Um, but, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of like quite a mixed bag. Um, and we really embrace uh a multitude of uh, illustration styles. So I really do encourage you all to uh, apply for illustration. 
Okay, over to you, Grace. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Grace, and I am actually a second year student, a uh, current student right now. And um, the head tutor, Jonathan Hodgson's, wanted me to step in today. Um, so I'll just go through some of the different things that they're looking for in your portfolio. Um, yes, I think, could you go to the next slide, please? Okay, so we'll start off with um, life drawing. Um, Jonathan was interested in seeing um, some shorter poses um, to kind of grasp like your understanding of movement um, of a figure, um, and then maybe some longer studies of the body and figures. Um, but he also wanted to, he also understands that not everyone has access to life drawing or in a class setting. Um, and so observational drawing, like these two examples provided, um, are also welcomed uh, just of structures or people you see on the street or your family members. Um, and next slide, please. And then another thing that Jonathan is really interested in is the um, your sketchbooks. And he is sees this as a space for you to show like what you're actually interested in and want to pursue and also kind of less structured, more playful area for you to express yourself. Um, and then, yes, we have concept art, which is kind of starting to get the idea of like what a project will look like or building a world um, and adding in different design elements like color, composition, things like that. Um, next slide, please. And then, yes, uh, character design is also something that um, the tutors would like to see. Um, and additionally, with um, sketchbooks, kind of like how you work through a character and come to a final product as well is helpful for the tutors. And um, then storyboards um, is very helpful because they want to see your, your work in like a sequential setting. Um, and so storyboards of projects, or um, if you have any experience doing comics or things like that, just something so they can see how you put different images together um, and it's in a sequence. Um, and then Jonathan wanted me to mention that this is a set, a stop motion set from a third year. And so this is um, what a student was working towards at the end of their course, something that you can look forward to, but he also understands that not everyone has had the time or access to build these kind of things. But if you have any like sculpting of um, puppets, if, if stop motion is something you're into, um, that would be great to see as well, like a character turnaround or something. And yes, and the, the last thing that he wanted me to mention was, um, if you have animation or if you've animated anything before, that would be great to include. Um, he understands that you're coming to this course to learn how to animate. So not everyone would necessarily know or have done something like that before. Um, but yeah, that would be great to include as well. And just make sure that the it's accessible, easily accessible in some way. Maybe it's on Vimeo or YouTube or something. Um, and yeah, and I'll, uh, I'm a current student and an international student, so I can try and answer any questions for people after. Um, but yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Thanks, Grace. Welcome. Um, okay, so moving on to photography. Unfortunately, our colleague Alison is unwell today, so she's been unable to do it. So what we have got are some photography slides, which hopefully you will find useful. So BA Photography will review all applicant portfolios. So again, they're a, a course that will look at all portfolios online for every applicant. They'll also be offering the Meet the Tutor events, which will take place either online or on campus. So very similar to all the courses so far, um, just that opportunity for you to meet with us for any a chance to any of those questions that you may have. So these events will um, have, give you a chance to meet the current students as well, which I think is very important. And we, we can arrange that for you online or on campus. Uh, you get to see the amazing, and they are amazing, photographic studios and darkroom facilities and ask any questions that you may have about the course. So I must stress that the photographic studios are um, unbelievable and they come fully equipped with the most amazing technicians as well. Um, so 
as we go through, um, so I'm just going to move something that's come up in my Zoom window there, apologies, um, what to include in your portfolio. So they're looking for photographs and other artworks, sketchbooks, project work, work that demonstrates technical abilities and work that you are passionate about. So it's very similar to all the other courses that we've mentioned, really. And, and what I think Grace sort of mentioned there, and I think is a really important point, is that none of us expect you to be experts in that field yet. So if you're applying to photography, you're not expected to be a photographer yet. That's what you're coming to us to, um, to learn. So any photographic work that you've got, then pop it in your portfolio and we can have a look at that. So um, you can have printed work. Uh, you can um, you make sure your work is very, um, think about how you present it. So it's again, like me and Matt were just talking about with illustration and graphics. It's just about making sure it's on the page and you can see it, that you don't try and put too many things um, on one page so that nothing gets lost. So think about your, um, your layout, but also think about maybe 20 images for photography, okay? You don't have to have hundreds. Um, and that's it for photography. So I'm going to go over to um, Georgia from Fine Art. Hello. Um, yeah, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Fine Art. Um, and I'm a GAA as well. So same as uh, Matt, uh, but for Fine Art. So um, yeah, so the tips here, they're for kind of portfolios if they were, you know, um, a physical portfolio, but they also um, make sense for on online portfolios and we will be reviewing all portfolios online this year. Um, so um, it's kind of the same as what other people are looking for, which is um, that things should be quite simply laid out so that we can, um, you can really let your work shine and we can um, work our way through it and sort of um, really see what the work looks like and the size of it and things like that. Um, obviously, fine art um, is kind of a more, um, encompasses quite a wide range of practices and doesn't have sort of just a few skills that are involved. So um, there's nothing that I can pinpoint that we specifically need to see in a portfolio, but um, we definitely want to see work that represents who you are because um, it's really about you as an individual and what interests you, what sort of projects and types of making work would sustain you throughout a three year course. Um, so if we just quickly go back sorry, to the first slide again with the writing on. Um, so as I said, fine art does include um, quite a lot of different practices. So there's video and sound, performance, um, sculpture, and of course, you know, uh, drawing and painting, printmaking, all those sorts of things. So um, obviously a flat work can be scanned or photographed um, and it doesn't have to be sort of one per sheet. If you've got a few things that are similar, you can put them on the same page. Um, if you want to um, and then sculpture work obviously um, photographed really well against a plain background so we can really see what it looks like and you might want to photograph it all the way around just to show us give us that experience of seeing it as a 3D um, object um, and then obviously sound and video I probably would recommend the best way to include this is to um, include a link to a YouTube or Vimeo if you can upload it to uh, one of those or if it's sound sound work you could put it on SoundCloud or one of those sorts of websites where you can share it easily with us. Um, yeah so we really want to see sort of um, someone with an open mind about what they want to do on the course so lots of experimentation and trying different things. Um, we find that if, if it's a portfolio that shows sort of all one type of artwork, um, perhaps we'd like to see a bit more variation just so we know that when you get to the course, you'll be open about trying different things and sort of um, moving out of your comfort zone. 
Um, and we'd also like to see sort of how you can move through a project from your initial idea through research and then through to finishing it. So um, can have the next slide, please? So I've just got a couple of examples of sort of, I'll call them sheets, I guess. Um, but so it could be, it's kind of like how you do a big sheet in a physical portfolio, but it also can work online um, as a collection of images. So on the left, um, we've got a sheet that's an example from a student portfolio that shows live drawing. Um, and as you can see, it's not sort of traditional live drawing. They've done lots of different ways of representing the body, representing the model. Um, and not all of them are perfect or the best drawing that we've ever seen. But I think it's really important to include it because it shows that they're not afraid to include something that's not their top strength. And they also have made an effort to show they've got observational skills and they can, um, as I said before, go outside their comfort zone a bit. Um, and then on the right, uh, we've got a selection of experimental photographic techniques. So we've got some chemigrams there, uh, photograms, uh, the cyanotypes, the blue ones. So these are kind of um, sort of darkroom techniques that not everybody would have the chance to do. But if you if someone has had the opportunity to do that, it's great to showcase that you've been in um, a workshop environment before and you've made sort of quite a different selection of things and it just shows another skill that you've got. Come the next slide, please. Um, so this. Um, shows another student portfolio how they've taken their project from um, initial idea through to um, it's sort of experimenting with different ways of um, perhaps producing a final um, a final work. So their project was sort of about um, places that were important to them. So they started with some photographs of their home area. And then you can see they've just sort of responded to these photographs in uh, six different ways. And then they've put all these onto one page. Um, and it kind of shows that they're willing to try lots of different things and they're working through their ideas. They're trying to come up with a way to, um, you know, explore the theme that they're working with um, and they're just, experimenting with lots of media. Uh, can I have the next one, please? Um, this one shows, um, it's a different student, but this just shows a good way of documenting an artwork that um, would have been sort of, it would have been very different in, to experience in person. So in this case, it's a sculpture with a video projected onto it. So here, um, the person sort of has had that artwork happening and then they've photographed it at different points during the durational piece. So it's kind of a simple way to just get across um, what that piece was like to see in real life. Um, so yeah, you don't actually, if you have video work, you can of course upload it, but it's also okay to show screenshots and just to give an idea of what that work was like as well. Um, yeah, and then this one is just a really simple way of documenting something three-dimensional. Obviously the person here doesn't have access to um, a professional photo studio or anything. So they've worked with what they've got and that's perfectly okay. And they've, the um, result is actually um, quite, uh, nice and simple as well. Um, yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Aidan Delaney and I teach on BA Film. So I'm going to go through the portfolio options, but I want to clarify that it's optional to submit a portfolio for film and I'll address that shortly. So ultimately, filmmaking is rather diverse, it's quite collaborative, and we, pra we privilege practice-based learning and employability skills. So the portfolio options are going to reflect this. Applicants who meet our entry requirements will be invited to submit a portfolio if they so choose. And portfolios which meet our criteria will convert a conditional offer to an unconditional offer. 
And ultimately, that's the purpose of the portfolio for film. So <clears throat> with three options, you only pick one. Just be very clear on that. Option one, submit a film that you worked on, a full film, and you have a statement explaining what role you played within that film. The second option is to submit a digital portfolio of artwork related to film. Um, and the third option is to respond to a set of treatment. So if you've never done anything within this area, option three might be a good um, option for people. So let's break them down. Option one, submit a film you worked on. You need to provide an example of one film you previously worked on and a contextual statement of 100 words or less explaining your role and contribution to the film. It's expected that the film was part of a collaboration with others and where you contribute to the group effort. You can choose an example from a college or A-level project. If you choose to submit a film as your digital portfolio, you will need to upload it as a single PDF or Microsoft Word document containing the contextual statement and add a URL link to that where the video is hosted. And this PDF gets uploaded to your Middlesex applicant portal. Option two, submit a digital portfolio of artwork that's related to film. So this could be a creative digital portfolio evidencing examples of practice related to filmmaking, such as painting, drawing, photography, visual design, sonic art, narrative prose, or screenwriting. So fundamentally, all the various different aspects that go into filmmaking. If you choose this option, you need to combine your work into a single PDF and a contextual statement of 100 words or less explaining how your practice relates to filmmaking. Again, a PDF gets uploaded to the Middlesex applicant portal. And in the case of Sonic Art, you need to supply a URL to where your work is hosted. These are some examples of the type of things that would uh, be relevant to that sort of portfolio. This is a third year graduate work, so it's rather developed. We wouldn't be expecting it to be as developed for uh, portfolio entry, um, but that's ultimately where you might go with this side of, of things. And then moving on to option three. So this is respond to a set treatment. So we have a two page document uh, describing a situation. It comes from a novel that one of our lecturers wrote. Um, so if a candidate has no example of prior work, but still wants to submit a portfolio, we'll ask you to complete a task responding to a set treatment and do one of the following. So create a storyboard for every shot you visualize in your response to the treatment, or you can produce a production plan. Create a production plan detailing how you go about organizing a film shoot to make a production based on the treatment. So that would include maybe budgeting, maybe uh, creating a crew, call sheets, all that sort of thing. And then the final option would be write a script for the treatment, putting it into dramatic form. Once again, if you choose this option, it's a single PDF containing your work and a contextual statement of 100 words or less explaining your response to the one page treatment and the PDF gets uploaded to the Middlesex applicant portal. Um, next screen has just some kind of visual examples of what that might look like. So on the left, you have the storyboard. In the middle, you have a production plan. And on the right, you have a, a script. So what we look for, we want evidence of an informed interest in film or television. We want to see prior knowledge of some aspect of filmmaking practice. And we're looking for examples of creative or critical thinking in one or more of the following areas, be that visual communication, storytelling, or film craft skills. Um, the portfolio, as I mentioned, is positioned as a conversion tool to move from a conditional to an unconditional stage, and it is not mandatory. So if you think about that, we've got a couple of potential scenarios. One, an applicant, an applicant submits and uh, based on tariff points, receives a conditional offer. If the portfolio is then submitted to an acceptable standard, that conditional offer will change to unconditional. If you choose not to choose, submit a portfolio, the final decision is based on the tariff. Um, and if an uh, applicant already holds the tariff, they will receive an unconditional without the offer of a portfolio. And then lastly, Claire, if you could pick that, that is some graduate work. Um, I'm guessing though it's longer than we have time for no dice. Um, there's the URL underneath. Maybe that might. 
No. Anyway, it's not critical. Um, it's we have graduate work up on the website. So if you want to see some examples of that, it's on the film page on the website. That's it for me. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, so now I've just left a little bit of time at the end for any questions. So I'm just going to go to the Q&A box um, to see what there is. So I'll read them out and hopefully we'll be able to answer them for you now. But just so you know as well, we have an open day on Saturday the 20th of February. Um, and that's always a really helpful thing for you as, if you're trying to decide where to go. Because I always sort of say to people, you only get, a, you know, you get a really good feel for what the university is like, what the course is going to be like by actually visiting and coming on campus. So if you can, please do come along on the 25th of February. Um, OK, so just looking at the, the questions, we've got a couple of questions here. So um, a couple, I think, about here about um, will these slides be made available? I'm going to say yes to that. Hopefully we'll do our best to um, get those emailed out to everyone. This normally is put on as a little link um, video um, as well. And we'll hopefully be able to get that out to people that we've got on register for, um, for joining today. Um, OK, so I've got a question here. I'm applying to be a graphic designer and was wondering what do you think is the best way to present process mistakes in a neat way? Um, that is a really good question, um, Laura. And so oh, this is one of those awful answers, isn't it, where I'm going to say there is no right way. Um, but hopefully that also puts you at ease as well. Um, one thing to really know about the whole portfolio process is that none of us are trying to trick you or trip you up. We really want the best for you and we are genuinely out to just look at the work. So if you, you just put your work in in something that feels like the right format to you, then I can pretty much guarantee that it will be the right format and you don't need to worry about that. Um, the best way to present something, if you're talking about sort of sketchbook work and maybe some of the like the process that you've been doing is a, 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 that example that I showed was one whole student portfolio. And they just put some little sketches that they'd done um, in the, you know, from their sketchbook and just showed a couple of pages of their process. And I don't know that whole project, but I got a really good feel from that just because I got to see that even if they take one, the, the logo, for example, you could see that that student was working on the logo and you could see that because of all the different sketches that they tried and tested lots of different things and some had failed um, and some had gone really well. And the only reason probably they got to the really good ones is because they allowed themselves to do those tests and those failures and to get to the right results. So hopefully, that answers your question, but if not, pop another one in there and I'll I'll try harder. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Now you've got us for another sort of 10 minutes. Um, you don't obviously have to stay for those 10 minutes, but you are more than welcome to ask any questions you've got. And it can be course related. It doesn't have to be about the portfolio as well. So if this, or if there's something that maybe one of us has gone through and you just want a bit of clarification, then um, feel free to ask it. I wonder if I could also just well uh, maybe we're thinking about it so we don't all sort of sit here in silence. Um, we do have a couple of I'm going to put them on the spot here. Sorry about this, guys. Um, but we do have a couple of students. So we've got Grace, we've got George, well, Georgia and Matt were students with us. And I just wonder maybe um, I don't know, maybe Grace, could you tell us a little bit about what you put in your portfolio when you were applying? Um, yes, I. I remember when I made my portfolio, I tried to stick very strictly to what they asked of me um, in all the different categories. Um, I was at the time working on my own stop motion film. And so I did put um, kind of like a character turnaround of the um, characters that I was making and um, different things that I had sculpted. Um, I was not very, I didn't have a lot of life drawing. And so I remember doing some more like observational drawing as well to make up for that. Um, and yeah, I, I included some animations that I had made as well. Um, but like, like I said earlier, it was not required. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's been kind of, it's been a, a while ago. So I feel like I'm kind of blanking on other things that I included, but um, no, that's great. Thanks, Grace. Sorry, I did put you on the spot there. That's okay. Um, 
we've just had another question through actually and it's about roughly how many images are expected in a portfolio um is it around 29 photography and again it's a good question and it's a question that a lot of people ask us actually and again it's one of those annoying answers we're going to give you as there is no specific number but all i can say is that make sure you put work that is work that you're happy with don't put things in just to pad something out um you know so it's better to put in three projects that you really love and you're really proud of and you want to show off because you think that's what represents you than to put five or six you know and the other three be ones that you're not too happy about so remember this portfolio is about showing who you are and where you know the kind of person you are the kind of artist or designer or illustrator or filmmaker that you are um so just put the ones that are specific you know that that you think show you in that light i guess is what i could say um Again, to kind of almost break that rule and contradict what I've just said there, um, I quite often find that, you know, at, at least 10 pages is kind of a really nice number to kind of get a good feel for what someone's like, even though know, it's a little bit tricky maybe to get that from one or two pages. So um, I guess around the 10, 20 mark is a nice number, but don't feel like you have to put 100 in there because we certainly wouldn't be expecting that. Um, another thing to note as well is that when you do apply to Middlesex, we do send out an email for you to, so we sort of send out another email, which is um, basically sort of says all the next steps, so how you upload your portfolio and how you go about that. There's also a link on there for the Meet the Tutor so that you can have a look at the dates and book into one of those if you wish to. Um, but also you'll find that each course will uh, provide a little link to a, a document that will just make maybe just a few little bullet points again, just to list the sorts of things that they'd be looking for in the portfolio. Um, so hopefully that will help you as well. Um, so yeah, so around to answer that question around 10 to sort of 20 pages is a good number, but please don't feel that, you know, if you've only got 18, that it's a problem because it certainly isn't. Okay. Um, how about you, Matt? Did you have a portfolio? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there, sorry, there is another question come up. Sorry, I've missed that. Um, is there a deadline for international student application for September 2023? It's a good question. My understanding that there isn't because um, we our applications um, window um, remains open. Um, the only thing I would sort of say, the disclaimer I would put on that is for overseas international students is that the visa issue. And so obviously, if you have to apply for a visa, for example, you might need to just sort of bear that in mind when you're making your application for how long that will take, because ideally you want to be sort of have that visa in place ready to study in September, rather than it sort of running a little bit late and you can't start with us until October, November. So that's just something to have a, um, a little think about there. Um, and then how do we make a PDF? Does it matter if it's Word or something else like Google? Absolutely perfect question. Um, a really important one as well, because I think sometimes we kind of assume that everyone knows how to do things. So uh, and that's actually not the case. So if you know how to make a PDF, then fantastic. If you're in Word, you can actually go to file and export as a PDF. So you could put it together in a Word document if you like. You might find that a little bit of a, an easier option in terms of just make because a PDF tends to send the images and you know that everything's coming over correctly. Um, so if, yeah, if you're in Word, you can file and export it. You can um, send it as other documents. That's absolutely fine. Like we said, you can also put a little link into a, um, a Word document if you want. The only thing I'd say about anything like Google, again, fine. We do our absolute best to accommodate people because we know and understand that everyone works in different ways. Just making sure that there's no sort of password issues on there. So if, for example, you're linking us to a Google Doc that you want to share with us, that you haven't put a password protection on there that we then can't get into. What I would say is don't worry too much, because if that does happen, what we will do is we will come back to you and we'll contact you to say a little bit of a problem with the portfolio. We haven't been able to access it and we'll help you figure that out. So, again, it's don't worry too much about it, but hopefully that um, helps and answers that question. Um, but if not, again, pop another question in there and we'll, we, I can revisit that if I've not sort of fully answered that question. And if anyone sort of as well um, and any of the other academics wants to add anything to that, if you think I've missed anything, please, please jump in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm So I actually 
uh, here at Middlesex, we don't do this anymore, but we used to run something called the IFAD, which was the Intensive Foundation in Art and Design. And that effectively, I suppose, operated like an access course. And um, But you did have to supply a portfolio. So I submitted a portfolio um, to the IFAD uh, tutors at the time, who was a guy, Sean Greer Perry, who's sadly no longer with us, but he was fantastic, a fantastic person. And um, yeah, basically I submit, I think I submitted between about, probably about like 15 pages of work. Um, and a lot of it was, I actually attended uh, university um, as a mature student. I was 26 when I applied. Um, and I, so, but I hadn't done any drawing for a long time. And well, actually, no, I'd, only, I'd gotten back into drawing. I hadn't done drawing for a long time and then I got back into it. Um, so my life story is, <laughs> um, so I, I'll try and speed this along. So I basically included um, lots of like life drawing that I'd done when I was at college. So when I was the ages of like, uh, what's college? It's like 16 to 18. Um, so I was I was lucky when I went to my college at Vanding um, in Brighton, I uh, we, we actually were, you know, encouraged to do life drawing in the studio, got to work with oil paints and all sorts. So I kind of sent a lot of that in. Um, I had gotten into digital painting at the time. Um, and I'm sure a lot of you are also, well, those of you who are interested in illustration will probably also be aware of kind of um, digital painting so I was I sort of introduced myself to uh, Photoshop and I'd kind of put in some stuff that I was messing around with that I was sort of doing um, like exploratory work mainly um, the kind of the work the work that I actually sent in isn't really like the work that I um, produce now but certainly um, I had an interest in kind of um, the figure um, and portraiture um, and so I included uh, that sort of work um, into my in my portfolio um, and I also included yes yeah, some observational drawing that I'd done whilst I was uh, at college um, as well so kind of basically I included a lot of things because I sort of had a very clear idea that I wanted to go into illustration when I applied for the foundation um, I, I sort of that was kind of what I geared my portfolio towards um and uh yeah so it, it, it basically a lot of the things I kind of said in the talk is is sort of what I included in my portfolio but it was yeah around 10 to 15 pieces for um BA illustration is uh is a, is a good amount as, as to parrot kind of what Claire was saying Lovely. OK, so um again, I'll just keep it open a little bit longer and see if anyone has any questions. But if not, then thank you very much for joining us. Um, from all of us, we'd like to wish you luck with your applications. Um, and all of us, I'm sure, would agree in saying that if you do have any questions, then do contact us um, and we will always be more than happy to sort of get back to you and answer any questions that you may have. Um, but like I say, um, come and meet us in person if you can make it on the 25th of February and we'll be able to show you lots of lovely work we'll be able to take you around our facilities we'll be able to introduce you to some students and um, tell you even more about what we're about and equally if you want to ask any more questions or show us something on the 25th of February you will be more than welcome to do that as well okay so on that note thank you very much for joining us take care and have a lovely evening <laughs>